وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور Ah, we've got another email. You're watching the mailbox. I'm Yusuf Estes. Here's one that's asking the question, can we celebrate birthdays? What about Christmas? What about Easter and other celebrations? What about that? Hmm. Well, first of all, in Islam, we know that everything regarding worship of Allah is dictated by Allah and his messenger, and we must not add to or take away from what's been said about that. In the matters of the life, though, just daily life, we're free to do whatever we'd like to do, except what's totally forbidden for us. If something's forbidden, then we mustn't do it. So let us now examine exactly what we mean by celebrating a birthday. When someone is born, who did all the work? The mother. Who's the one that carried the child inside of her? And who's the one that went through the labor pains? And who's the one that raised the child up? So if anything should be celebrated, it should be celebrating the mother for her hard work and her efforts. Also, another thing, when you talk about birthdays, would you be talking about the sun calendar, which is now associated with the Christian religion, or would you be talking about the lunar calendar, which is associated with the Jewish and the Muslim religion? Because if you go by the sun calendar, there's 365 days, 0.4, and then if you go by the lunar calendar, there is 354 days. So the years are not going to be the same anyway. So if you said, well, it's just for fun. I want to have a cake and I want to put candles on it. Well, then you got another problem. The candles on the cake actually are not coming from Christianity or Islam. They're coming from the Celtic religion. And this is the Druids many, many centuries ago. And they used to worship fire and things like that. And this candle represents that. So we're starting to really infringe on the area here of worship. And this is why birthdays, Easter, Christmas, and all the rest of it is not something acceptable in Islam because it implies a type of worship or celebration other than what's been approved by Islam. We do have two main Eids called Eidain, and that's Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr. And if you understand how that works, we've got plenty of time to celebrate in there, have a good time. And as far as some of the other celebrations people are talking about here, I wish you would talk with your imams about this and find out the reason why. Okay, we've got another one in here. It's asking about plucking the hair from the face and the eyebrows. Well, if you're altering what Allah has given you, you, you must have a really good legitimate reason for this. Talk with your imam about this and he'll explain it to you. But basically, if you have something that's uh, not characteristic of normal appearance of a human being, this is one thing. But if it's just to beautify yourself, to show off, to attract attention, that's absolutely haram because you mustn't be doing that uh, to, you know, attract uh, the unwanted attention of these men and so on. Well, anyhow, that's it for the mailbox. Don't forget to visit our website, islamnewsroom.com, or you can type in keywords and get more of this. Till next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.